Um, I don't think we go a week without one or two new patients who have fainted. More kids are fainting during school than ever before, and it might have something to do with those healthier school lunches. That's according to one pediatric cardiologist in Cedar Rapids. And to solve the issue, he's prescribing some surprising home remedies. KCRG TV 9's Jordy Kalk is here tonight with the story. So what aged kids are most at risk here? From middle school to high school, students have the greatest risk of fainting during school, but there is some good news. In most cases, fainting is not a sign of a more serious medical condition. Instead, it just means the kids need to make a couple changes to their diets. There's a decent amount of sodium in many favorite snacks, but too often parents shy away from these foods and opt for what they think are healthier munchies. Parents can always look at me a little funny because they you know, some of them say we try to eat less salt in our house, and I'm like, that's probably good for the adults. I'm, I'm not so sure we should have taken that to the children. Dr. Zeta Gruen with Mercy Medical Center in Cedar Rapids says this lack of sodium is part of the reason for an increased number of fainters. Sodium helps retain fluids, and kids that don't have enough fluids are more likely to experience dizziness or even fainting spells. You know, it's basically under perfusion of the brain. You're just not getting enough uh, fluid up to your brain, and so it has no no option but to sort of turn off for a little bit. In 2012, the USDA issued new rules for healthier school lunches, including less salt. That coincides with when Zitter Gruen says he started noticing more fainting spells. And a lot of these incidents happened during class time at school. School lunches, for instance, you know, have very low sodium in, their, in school lunches. So many kids we see, we work on ways of how to deal with that. So Zitter Gruen often tells kids to bring salty snacks like pretzels or crackers to school. He says anything that physically shows the salt crystal is best. Kiddos should also have a drink with them at all times, like a water bottle. Use other sodium containing foods or fluids, Gatorades, things like that to compensate for school lunch being so low in salt. At College Community School District, fitness guru John Lacasco doesn't go as far to say that all kids need more sports drinks like Gatorade, but he does think that kids need more fluid. Well, rule of thumb, what I usually do is I try to tell the kids of myself, every time you walk past a water fountain, stop and get a drink. Is that going to be enough? No, but it's at least something. Lacasco sees the impacts of kids being dehydrated firsthand, mainly after their workouts during gym class. I see kids every once in a while getting dizzy, having dizzy spells. I see kids um, starting to get nauseous, actually have to go vomit. Although fainting spells can happen at any time, Zittergruen agrees kids are likely to faint after intense physical activity. I would say every sports season we see a little influx. Uh, cross country is probably a big one for me. Uh, we, I can almost always tell you when the first cross country meet is because a lot of kids will have issues, especially when they're hot, hot days. He maintains the best way to prevent a fainting spell is to down liquids all day before that race. And it's not a bad idea to store something else in lockers. We have a lot of kids carrying small little salt shakers to school. Dr. Zittigruen says teen teenagers should drink about three liters of a liquid a day. And as for salt in school lunches, the Trump administration stopped even lower sodium levels in school lunches from taking effect. Bruce and Beth. Salt shakers in the lockers. Huh? Oh. Kind of strange. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you, Jordy.